Good morning. My name is Bill. I'm a biological scientist from University of Florida Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. Today the topic is establishment of the winter artichoke production system in Florida. Artichoke belongs to the Aster ACE family. People grow artichoke as healthy food because it contains very high level of antioxidant. The edible part of an artichoke is mostly in its flower bud called heart, which is actually the receptacle of a flower. If you leave the flower bud unharvested in the field, it will develop into a beautiful flower that people could use in floral arrangement. Artichoke is native to the Mediterranean climate, where it provides sufficient chilling hours for the plants to flower, but not as cold as causing freeze damage. Depending on the cultivar, artichoke requires 200 to 500 hours below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Without enough chilling hours, artichoke doesn't flower and doesn't have much commercial values. Currently in the United States, California is taking almost 100% of artichoke production because of its optimum climate. In California, there are two major production regions in Salinas from spring to fall, in Imperial County during winter. So they provide artichoke all year round. In 2019, the production value reached $79 million. In Florida, by contrast, we're falling in the dilemma of not enough chilling hours versus freeze damage. In North Florida, we have more chilling hours, but a higher risk of freeze damage, vice versa for South Florida. To overcome the limitation of insufficient chilling hours in Florida, in our preliminary study, we have tested the application of a plant hormone, gibralic acid, or GA in short, to induce flower bud in artichoke. This method is also known as artificial vernalization, in which GA spray is serving as a substitute for chilling hours because it regulates the group of genes the same way as chilling environment does. What we have found is two foliar applications of GA at certain rates could significantly increase the yield compared to no GA spray. In the past couple years, we've also tested different cultivars that are popular in California or Europe. Depending on their responsiveness to GA, the yield and the bud quality, we have selected several top performers. Those are Imperial Star, Green Queen, Green Globe Improved, and Opal. In 2021 to 2022 season, we've conducted two field experiments. In the first experiment, we've tested the optimum planting window. This information is important. For growers, early planting means early yield in January and early February. During this time, the production in California is relatively low, so there is a niche market for Florida artichoke. We've tested three planting dates, October 5th, October 20th, and November 4th. They were about two weeks apart. Four cultivars were tested as mentioned above. All treatments received the GA spray at seven and nine weeks after transplanting. Experiment followed a split plot design with planting date as the main plot factor. In the second experiment, we've tested the optimum timing to spray GA. For artichoke, after GA application, the crop switched from vegetative growth to reproductive growth. So that means if we spray GA too early, then the vegetation of the plant is limited, which will translate into lower yield. However, if we spray GA too late, then the flower buds will be induced when the weather is already hot, and that also negatively influence bud quality and the yield. We've tested four GA programs, untreated control and the GA spray at six and eight, seven and nine, eight and 10 weeks after transplanting respectively. 
Three cultivars were tested, Green Globe Improved, Green Queen, and Imperial Star. All treatments were planted on October 20th. Experiment followed a split plot design with the GA program as main plot factor. Here are some results. In the first experiment that tested planting date and cultivar, on the left hand side, pictures of different treatments were taken on November 23rd, which is about six weeks after first planting, four weeks after second planting, and two weeks after third planting. At this time, all treatments were in the vegetative growing stage. As you can see, the difference in plant size from different planting dates. On the right hand side, pictures of different treatments were taken on February 23rd. At this time, the first planting date was reaching the end of the production cycle. As you can see, the plants of opal started to decay. But for the other planting dates, they were still producing more buds. So that means if we want to extend the production window, one option is to stagger the planting dates. In terms of marketable yield, the interaction between planting date and cultivar was not significant. That is why the data are put here. Planting date had no significance, but for cultivar, Imperial Star had the highest number of bud produced per plant, whereas Green Queen has the largest single bud on average. Overall, Imperial Star had significantly higher yield compared to other cultivars, reaching 13.84 tons per hectare, which is about 88% of the average production in California. Other cultivars produced 57% to 73% of the yield of Imperial Star. For the second experiment that tested the GA program and the cultivar, on the left hand side, pictures of different treatments were taken 90 days after transplanting. You can see a cultivar difference responding to GA. For example, in the second column, GA was sprayed at 6 and 8 weeks after transplanting. Plants of Imperial Star looked much smaller than Green Queen and Green Globe improved. The reason is this cultivar responded to GA earlier and switched to reproduction sooner than the other two cultivars. As you can see, more flower buds were reduced in this cultivar. On the right hand side, pictures of different treatments were taken at 126 days after transplanting. You can also see a cultivar difference responding to GA. For example, the last column GA was sprayed at 8 and 10 weeks after transplanting. You can see some flower buds had been induced in Green Queen and Imperial Star, but not for Green Globe improved. In terms of marketable yield, interaction between cultivar and the GA program was not significant, but the p-value was very close to 0.05, and then there were some trends observed. So results of individual treatments were presented here. For Green Globe improved, GA spray at 7 and 9 weeks after transplanting received the highest yield. But for Green Queen and Imperial Star, it was at 6 and 8 weeks after transplanting. That means for different cultivars, we need to apply GA at different timings. For all cultivars, spraying GA too late significantly decreased the marketable yield from 33% to 46%. Based on these results and some preliminary data, the most recommended cultivars are Imperial Star and Green Queen. Imperial Star had the highest yield and Green Queen had the best single bud quality. Opal is the only cultivar among these four that produced the purple artichoke and Green Globe improved had a decent yield and a decent bud quality. 
Another factor to take into consideration is the cost of seeds. Imperial star and green globe improved are open pollinated cultivars. That's why the seeds are much cheaper than hybrid, such as green queen and opal. A brief summary of the production guide. So far, we had success transplanting from October to early December. That makes the harvest window from January to April. In the future, we will test the different planting date to see if we can extend the harvest window even further. For plant spacing, we recommend 6 feet between rows and 3 feet within the row. For GA application, we recommend 2 foliar sprays. The first spray should happen about 6 to 7 weeks after transplanting when plants reach 28 inches in diameter. This is also the width of the planting bed, which could serve as a visual gauge for growers. The second spray should happen two weeks after first spray. We use 7.5 fluid ounce per acre, and that is the middle point of the rates recommended by the company. We use white on black plastic mulch in Central Florida. In North Florida, for late planting, black plastic mulch is recommended. Fumigation, as always, is preferred, and it will take 100 to 110 days from transplanting to harvest. We have very exciting news. Picture here is showing Charles from a Perros family farm. He grew artichoke last year, and it was successful. He is planning to grow artichoke on a commercial level in Florida this year. So our effort in the past five years is finally paying off. For more information, you can follow us on Facebook, and we also have a YouTube channel that updates our research activities. The funding source of this project is Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. I would like to thank all the collaborators and lab members for their contributions. Thank you.